Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we dissect headlines from our city, our state, our country. We take a look at your questions, your ideas, your suggestions. We defend ourselves from critics. We tell good jokes. We tell bad jokes. And occasionally we fuck up, but otherwise have a very good time. And it is a good day to be here. At least for me, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really happy to be feeling better, and I'm really happy for all the good wishes that I keep getting, and I'm really happy for Logan, who just went... <laughs> Logan went to Costco. This is nobody's business, but Logan, you started it. Logan went to Costco, got an air fryer. Now, every time that Logan buys a new gadget, I suggest names because I name my gadget. So I said to Logan, you know, your new air fryer should be called Jacinta. Why? Because it's the first name that came to my mind. When I met his ill-mannered dog who has a name that I don't even know, she was just all over the place and biting me. And I'm like, you know, you are a chancla. And I call her chancla ever since. But the funny thing is that all these names, I also came up with a name for Logan's new bicycle, but for the life of me, I can't remember what that name was. And I hope Logan does, but maybe he doesn't, maybe he doesn't care. And that's okay too. I just love having fun with my friends and I love meeting you guys. And uh, yes, I changed my shirt. Yay. And I changed my chingadera all by myself. Although I did walk to Den and Kathy's place so that they could give me their seal of approval and we exchanged handicap tips. It was all good. Today is Saturday. We're already in the middle of the weekend and it's going to be a really good day. I have news for everyone. I have important news about COVID. I have news about the upcoming campaign. Now the, the authorities seem to be waffling about it. We don't know exactly if it'll happen or not. Um, we have bad news from Seapal. The workers are threatening to go on strike. Um, there were a couple of quakes. I'm wondering if anybody felt them. And yesterday, um, a friend of mine asked me a question that sent me on a fun alcoholic rabbit hole about why we call cerveza, which is beer, why we call cerveza chela. And today we're going to talk about that. We're going to learn a little bit about the, 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 the nicknames of cerveza or beer throughout the country. And I am very excited to read your comments, questions, and ideas. As always, if it's truly important, uh, please add a cue at the beginning. And if you're new to this broadcast and you're joining us for the first time, please let us know by adding the word new to your comment, and we'll be so very happy to uh, address it during the second half of the broadcast after the weather forecast. Let's dive in. Well, as we suspected yesterday, Mexico is rebounding as far as COVID cases are concerned with drastic changes in the national stoplight indicator. Starting this Monday, there will be 12 states in green, 10 in yellow, 9 in orange, 
and one in red. Let me scroll down to this map so we can see what we're talking about. And there it is. The one little state in red is Aguascalientes. And unfortunately, both Jalisco and Colima, our southern neighbor, have switched back to yellow. Meanwhile, uh, Nayarit, our northern neighbor, remains in green. There is no indication that Governor Alfaro will make any changes as far as health-related mandates in our state at this time. And we remember that the current mandates, that is having to show your vaccine-related paperwork if you want to go get boozy, remain in effect until the middle of February, February 14 or 12. I forget which one of the dates, uh, but that is what we have right now. Um, also, yesterday we mentioned that there would be a booster campaign on Tuesday with 2,000 vaccines that are available for folks in our 50s. Now authorities are not entirely sure if they will have this campaign or not, and according to this news report, they will make up their minds during the weekend. You see, the $2,000, the 2,000 doses that are available right now are left over from last week's campaign, and they could easily take care of the people that received uh, our second dose, and I say our because I was there, between August 3rd and 5th of last year at La Lija. I remember being there, and the, the total number of people that were there uh, was less than 2,000. But many others received their campaign uh, shots at other locations at that time. And what authorities are concerned about is that if they do a one-day campaign with only 2,000 vaccines, it will confuse people. Um, and I can certainly see how and why. So the short of it is that the authorities are going to decide this weekend whether they will actually have this campaign or whether they will wait until we can receive more vaccines and just have a more generalized booster campaign for folks in our 50s. Uh, ooh, I have an itchy nose. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have. Governor Alfaro, God bless our governor. He took to his Facebook page briefly yesterday with COVID sniffles and all. He doesn't have a lot of symptoms apparently but he does have a congested nose and i felt for him you know me with my brace and the governor with his with his sniffles trying to give us an update and and power to him that he's working and he's taking care of business while he's convalescing um anyhow he talked about uh covid related issues and the good news is that positivity rate the positivity rate in our state is stabilizing um, it's not going any higher than it is right now. And even though the number of cases continues to increase, hospitalizations are quite manageable at this time throughout the states, throughout the state. And in fact, here in Puerto Vallarta, the hospitalization rate is under the statewide average. So that is good news. Although the, the COVID cases are on the rise, so it's a good time to continue being mindful of our our mandates as we continue forward through the pandemic. Uh, now, hopefully this doesn't make things worse, but we learn that CEAPAL, the union employees, or rather the, the employees at CEAPAL are unionized and that they are threatening to go on strike in, 44, in 48 hours unless 14 demands are met. The demands include an 8% salary increase for almost 500 workers along with uniforms and work tools that have already been promised but not delivered. Presently, we don't know what is the official position of the municipality about this issue, but we can certainly hope that this does not escalate because we are very mindful of the fact that as it is, we are having water problems throughout the city and work is advancing as fast as it can, or at least that's what I hope to believe. I hope to believe that workers are not using this as a bargaining chip, but what do I know? All I can say is I hope it doesn't get ugly as far as water needs are concerned. Now let's take a look at our weather forecast, which of course I forgot to turn on um, and see what's going on for our weather for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Happy winter. Hope you're a fan of seasonal affective disorder. Okay. 
thank you very much, snarky weather. Um, it is 25 degrees now, it feels like 27. Humidity is high again at 64%, and our temperature in Fahrenheit is 78 degrees. Our weather forecast for today, Saturday, is humid and mostly cloudy through the day with a high temperature of 27, low temperature of 20. Tomorrow, Sunday, we can expect an overcast day with a high temperature of 26 and a low temperature of 19. And on Monday, <laughs> I went all the way to Tuesday, on Monday, we can expect a mostly cloudy day with a high temperature of 27 and a low temperature of 17. Before I forget, I want to follow up on something I managed to connect with Gina from Whiskey Kitchen yesterday, and she confirmed that she's all excited about the new location, number one. Number two, she told me that they're looking for an opening date around February 20th, which makes me hungry. And number three, she did not, we did not get into specifics as to whether she's closing the other location or not, but she was thrilled to come on board on one of our broadcasts and let us know through an interview what her plans are and what's going on. So we are in the process of scheduling that and making it happen so that we can all get excited about this. Again, if you didn't catch the news yesterday or the day before, Whiskey Kitchen, the very popular Southern food um, restaurant in uh, Conchas Chinas or Amapas, I'm actually not sure, uh, is opening a new branch here in uh, Colonia La Vena, one block away from my home. And I am so thrilled it's not even funny because we shamelessly love their food. Um, now, moving right on, I wanted to let you know, in case you felt a little dizzy yesterday, it was not you. Two more earthquakes um, uh, around four degrees uh, magnitude were felt around noon in Puerto Vallarta. But I must say, I did not feel either one of them. The first one was a magnitude 4.1 uh, with an epicenter 96 kilometers southeast of Puerto Vallarta, while the second one was less than an hour later with a 4.2 magnitude. Four point somethings are the kind that we can actually feel. But again, I was, um, I was, I don't know where I was. I think I was here. No, I was over at Kathy and Dens. Either that or I was about to head over there. Uh, but uh, fortunately, no incidents were, were reported. And now I want to tell you a little story about beer drinking. Yesterday, I was exchanging messages with a couple of dear friends, and one of them said to me, well, why are cervezas or beers? Well, yeah, let's start with basics. We know that beer in Spanish is cerveza. And my friend was asking, why is it that cervezas are called cheves? So we're going to, so I came up with a theory. First of all, I came up with a theory and the theory was a little, I don't know, it was just speculative on my part, but of course, wanting to be, uh, 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 wanting to be efficient or, or wanting to be curious about this, I went and did a little bit of research on why we call cervezas chelas. Um, and everything, well, there's a couple of theories out there. And, and I certainly hope that you're curious about this. If not at least curious, you may be a little thirsty after we're done with this. And of course, we'll get to your comments in a second. But anyhow, I digress. Um, one of the theories speculates that it all boils down to the state of Yucatan. Yucatan is in the southeastern side of Mexico. You know, there's a peninsula with that name, and that's where the Maya culture developed and you should know that there are still a number of people that speak Maya, the, the, the original language, and, and if not fluently, there are, there's a lot of Mayan terminology that continues to exist. Why am I so small? Oh, because we are going to be having stuff down there, but there you are. I'm a little bigger. No, maybe I'll keep myself small. Pay no attention to me. I'll just stay in this corner and mind my own business. Anyhow, um, in Yucatan was the factory that was operated by Cerveceria Moctezuma, and Cerveceria Moctezuma was um, the factory, the company that created uh, Cerveza Superior. And 
it was 1970 when they came up with this slogan, La rubia que todos quieren es cerveza superior. And that means the blonde, as in blonde ale, the blonde ale everybody wants to drink is superior beer. Well, it so happens, according to this theory, that the vast majority of the workers in this Yucatan Peninsula were of Mayan descent. And there is a word in Mayan called chel that uh, translates to something like, uh, like, like blonde. So this theory claims that it was because of the, the beer factory workers that they started calling the blonde beer chel because it was blonde, and this is why we call them chelas today. But that's not the only theory uh, that I would subscribe to, and this brings us into the land of cheladas and micheladas, and I see that Stephanie Valencia is super curious. She says, I love micheladas. Well, let us talk about this business of cheladas and micheladas. What the hell are they? I still remember my first trip back to Mexico when I was in college and I was treated to a chelada, which is nothing more or less than a cold beer with ice cubes and lime juice. And it's the most refreshing thing. No, if you look at the word chelada, it is by some, by some people's consideration, it is a shortening of cerveza helada. Chelada is cerveza helada or frozen beer. Uh, whereas michelada is mi cerveza helada or my frozen beer. Now, what's the difference between one and the other? Well, look at the little photograph we have here. And you can see that one is looks like beer and the other one looks like an, either dark beer or beer to which chingaderas has be, have been added. And that's exactly the case. One of these two very refreshing beverages that are served with salt on the rim of the glass as well has only... Um, only has um, lime juice added in ice cubes, whereas the other one has sauces and spices, kind of like a like a like a Caesar drink, and um, and that should be clear enough. Now the tricky thing is that in certain parts of the country, chelada means just with with lime and in other parts of the country it's the other way around so whenever i order and you should order one too if you've never tried a beer with ice cubes and lime i know it sounds disgusting it really does but it is it is very refreshing and it's a great way to get lit economically <laughs> although you'll be peeing a lot if you do that if you do a bunch of those you will be spending a lot of time going number one anyhow in my experience whenever i go out to a restaurant and uh, ask for a chelada, I always specify, I love a chelada, comma, I mean just a beer with lime juice. And they and, and it, it pays to clarify because while some other people love the one that has clamato and all the other things, it's not for me. Uh, anyhow, that is uh, the interesting other theory about why cervezas are called chela, you know, because they're cold, chela, chela, helada, cerveza, helada. And um, while we're at it, it is also worth mentioning that Chela is the nickname for women called Graciela or Grace or Gracie, as George Burns would say. So um, I have a Tia Chela, for example. I have an Aunt, Aunt Chela, Aunt Graciela. She hates beer, by the way, but you don't need to know that. Um, now, here's another angle. In the northeastern part of Mexico, which is where I'm from, Cervezas are not called chelas, they're called cheves. And I do have a theory for that. And that was my theory that I explained yesterday to my friend. And she's like, nah, I'm not buying it. And again, everything that I'm going to mention moving on uh, for the next few minutes, is totally <clears throat> speculative on my part. I could not find any other information. So this is speculative. Enjoy it. Um, in 1965, Argentinian singer... Palito Ortega, there he is, let me get out of the way, there he is with his Mexican sombrero, released a single in ranchero style called La Chevecha. Now, you may ask, what is an Argentinian singer doing releasing a Mexican style song and promoting uh, with a Mexican hat? Well, that's what artists do when they want to break in in different markets. 
you know, there's a lot of Latin American artists or South American artists that came to Mexico uh, to try to make a living here. So what do they do? They learn the repertoire. They learn how to sing it, how to sing it. Uh, the very, very, very famous uh, Spanish singer, Rocio Durcal, for example, she left, she left Spain, came to Mexico, and she started singing ranchero-style music, and she was perhaps even more successful singing our music, and particularly the Juan Gabriel songbook um, uh, in, in Mexican ranchero style. Anyhow, I digress. Palito Ortega came up with this song in, um, in 1965, La Chevecha. And what, why is it called La Chevecha? Well, the chorus, and I'm going to sing, <laughs> the chorus goes, Que chavocha la chevecha, que chechuvea la cabecha. And that is a almost childish way of saying, Que sabrosa la cerveza, que se sube a la cabeza, which means how flavorful is the beer that goes to your head, obviously, if you've had enough of it. So notice how Palito Ortega sang Chevecha, and Chevecha, well, you see Cheve there, so it is also possible that, um, that Cheve comes from this particular song. Uh, and, and it's a song that was a super hit at the time, and a lot of people still sing it um, when you're tipsy or drunk, and you know, if you go to a bar and you hear people going, que chavocha la Chevecha, que chechuvea la cabecha. And of course, I'm gonna leave you with a YouTube link so that you can sing the song and at least get um, a little thirsty. Now, the final part of this little treaty, uh, treaty or treaties? Treat, this little exploration, whatever. The last part of this little exploration is that in the northwestern part of the country, like in, uh, in near California and in all those states, we call cerveza birra. And I'm going to ask you if you can think of why Northwestern Mexico calls cerveza birra. And I look forward to your theories in the comments as I begin to go through your comments for today. And I'll tell you why when I'm done reading your comments. And, and now I could use, I mean, it's only 1053, but a michelada or a chelada would be so divine at this stage of the game. Lots of good mornings this morning. Thank you very much, as always, for your good mornings for your good wish for a quick recovery. I'm feeling much better than yesterday or slightly better. I'm sleeping very well and that must be some of the crazy drugs that they gave me. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Um, Gwen is excited to be visiting brother Albert in PV. How wonderful to have family come and visit family and friends. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, and Albert is Wait, I'm confused. Gwen is coming in two weeks to visit Albert, and Albert is here. Ah, you signed a new lease to be in El Centro, not in Cinco de Diciembre. Well, good for you. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, let's see what else we have. Watching on YouTube a lot lately, excited to be live today. Either way, I'm just happy to see the connections developing between cluster members, and it's it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, let's see what else we have. Another sister, another sister arriving. Glee, that is wonderful. Again, you know, to have to have visitors is is a good thing. When your apartment is clean. <laughs> um, Oh, people buying air fryers. I am envious. I just don't have any more counter space, but I am curious about those machines. That's for sure. Um, Christy, I'm wondering if you're having problems because you're watching on an iPad. I went through the comments yesterday and for whatever reason, uh, uh, it's, um, uh, it seems to be happening to iPad, iPad users. I hope it's, it goes away soon. Lisa, it's great to see you. Yes, I fractured my shoulder, and you'll see me with a sling for a month, but I'm getting so much love from you and the rest of my friends in the cluster, and Luna, who's sitting here. She's not leaving me any second now. It is fascinating. Uh, so it's all, it's all good. Uh, la, 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 la. El Centro is looking forward to a chill movie day. 
Well, so am I, Jill. I just rewatched last night. I rewatched Aliens because um, Netflix has this great documentary called documentary series called The Movies That Made Us. And they had a great episode on the making of Aliens and and um, and it was interesting to see it. So I wanted to watch the movie again. And I tell you, Sigourney Weaver just opened the door to for so many women uh, heroines, heroines, hero, lady heroes, women heroes to kick some serious ass on the screen. So if you're looking for a chill movie, well, Aliens is not a chill movie. But if you want to see some crazy woman in action taking control, Aliens is the one that I would recommend. Uh, let's see. Albert is ready to try Whiskey Kitchen for the first time. The pics are amazing. I am so jealous in the best possible way. Um, I love, I love Whiskey Kitchen. I mean, it's just such comforting food. It's not even funny. Uh, let's see what else. Barbara says, watch Ozark. I started Ozark and ended episode one. I was, no, ep season one. And I was fascinated with the complexity of the relationships of all the characters. And I have yet to latch onto season two again. Um, but it's a great series. What kind of food does the Whiskey Kitchen serve? Oh, that's an easy answer. Whiskey Kitchen serves American comfort food. So for a Mexican person like myself, fried chicken, um, uh, spicy Cajun stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's wonderful Southern comfort food that we don't have in, in, in many places here in Puerto Vallarta. So when I discovered the restaurant, I went and she makes these, oh, here she is. Uh Oh, Gina's in the house. Gina. Oh my God. If I was using the other software, I would bring you in uh, for an, an, a spontaneous interview. But unfortunately, with this program, I cannot do that. But, um, but you know, Gina's food is it's like heavenly, heavenly uh, balm for the soul. Oh, my God. And then she makes these decadent um, pictures of, of wine. Um, oh, my God. My brain is on Saturday mode because it's Saturday. Uh, yeah. Punch. No, not punch. Um, wine. Oh, Gina, help me out. Please talk about your food. <laughs> not making much sense today i'm sorry um sangria sangria oh my god the sangrias will leave you waddling and will make you um irresponsible so drink those sangrias with moderation uh let's see what else thank you julie uh there are many ways on their facebook page i totally suggest you go visit it because everything is delish delish and if i glow about food it's because i love eating and how wonderful it is to eat here in puerto vallarta still looking through your uh, through your comments and hoping that you'll have some interesting um theories about the, the the way they call cerveza in the northwestern part of mexico they call it birra and um and i'll see what you guys have to say let's see what else we have da -da -da -da. Oh, Mark, I am so much, uh, I'm in great minds think alike. Nothing that a couple lines of Prozac couldn't cure. I hear you. Uh, Noi, hey, hermanita. I hurt myself, but I'm okay. I swear to God. It's great to see you. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there's a community service announcement from Eric here. Um, I hope it's, I hope it's wonderful. Eric, don't frighten me by putting posts, uh, links about things that I don't know about. Um, but but whatever it is, I hope it's good. Uh, let's see what else we have. Let's see what else we have. Da, 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 da. How fascinating that iPads are going funny. I have my iPad next to next to me, but I use it to control the screens. So I, I can't watch live using my iPad. Uh, let's see what else we have. Comments about micheladas and cielo rojos and this, that, and the other. Uh, uh, I, have to, I have to amend this, my dear friend, Den. I do the research for me as well. I mean, I do the research for, because I'm curious and I'm just grateful that you guys you folks are interested and curious about things. 
um, it's it's a win-win. It is an an absolute win-win. Let's see. <laughs> Bill says I had owned a Chevy, great car. So you can drink Chevy Chevys in your Chevy, I suppose. I love it. Angelica says she never heard that expression, birra. And uh, and and Colleen nailed it. It comes from the word beer. And that's absolutely right. And I know that to be the case because, for example, when you, I remember being in Laredo in Texas, and when people speak Spanglish there, in say, instead of saying, take a left, they say, te toma una lefta. And then toma una raita. So it, instead of saying go left, go right, they say go lefta, go raita. So so it makes sense that in border towns they might say, you know, tomate una birra. And there you go. That's the explanation. Uh, and yes, Stephanie got it as well. Yeah, we always add A to English words. Although I stopped doing it because I, I thought I was hurting the feelings of a friend that thought I was mocking his efforts to learn Spanish. So and now I'm very careful with which friends I make fun of English and Spanish in front of, because I don't want to offend anybody trying to learn a new language. Uh, let's see what else. I want to see the new screen. The movie says Tammy, I want to see the new screen. You know, really scary movies are not for me. And of course I just recommended aliens, which is very frightening. Uh, but, um, but I suppose I would see the new screen. My next big movie theater exploration is going to be Moonfall. And that is that movie that has to do with the moon going out of orbit and heading towards Earth and, cake and causing all kinds of like unrealistic cataclysm. I mean, what a better, is there a better movie than that to go watch High as a Kite? I don't think so. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think it opens on February 20. Um, Let's see what else. Stephanie says, I would love to leave comments on your YouTube posts. I've been wanting to send you my support all week, wishing you a speedy recovery. As long as we are there, um, a quick hello to people that watch on YouTube. And I will be very frank. The reason I don't have comments um, available on YouTube is because it adds another amount of work to lovingly maintain my relationships with you on a daily basis. And presently, I am not capable of fulfilling that. So I do feel, I, 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 I am aware that some YouTubers might feel shortchanged by not being able to leave comments or better yet, participate live. And hopefully we'll find ways to address that in the near future. But we love people that watch on YouTube and we're grateful for all those thumbs up. That's for sure. Um, I see good comments about Ozark. I Again, I hear it's a fabulous continuation. I mean, again, I love the first season and I'm looking forward to catching up at some point. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wow. Got to work with Sigourney on Ghostbusters, a wonderful person. You know, I I loved watching the the episode of Movies That Made Us on uh, on Facebook because she seems so freaking down to earth. Uh, what a great lady. Um, oh, thank you for clarifying, Rob. It's about a river cleanup event for the Rio Quale. Thank you very much for that. It's just that... Um, Nothing bad about sharing links, but I just want to discourage the habit because then everyone or anyone would be in the habit of posting links uh, on the comments, which is not bad, but then we don't know what's in those links, et cetera, et cetera. But if it's something like a cleanup, I know that you've done them before and what a great effort you guys put together. This is Eric from the Cowork Hotel that is close to reopening. Uh, so thank you for letting us know, Eric, and thank you for all the work that you do to keep the community a little bit, a little better looking. I was able to grab some photographs from Mayor, from Governor Alfaro's feed of uh, the the latest on the on the bridge reconstruction, and that'll be the cover shot for today's broadcast once we are done. Uh, oh, there's a question for for S Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie. Will you keep the original business open? 
and hopefully we have an answer. Hopefully we will. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Julie says that some people call bicycles bica and troca. Well, troca is very popular, uh, at least in, in, in Monterrey, where I'm from. Troca, to call a truck a troca, absolutely. Uh, watch Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up was hysterical. It's on Netflix, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, those YouTubers can always come to Facebook and leave comments. You know, Barbara, you'd be surprised, or maybe not, at how many people don't enjoy Facebook that much. Uh, and I respect that. I totally respect that. I don't, uh, although I, I, I feel for your suggestion, I wouldn't expect people to necessarily do that, you know, and I cannot, cert I certainly cannot blame that there are YouTubers and there are Facebookers and, and a lot of people don't want to cross the bridge either way. But we are trying to, you know, make sure that we make as many people as we can connect as possible. Um, let's see. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I think we're done. Oh, my goodness. And it's already 11.07. And here I was thinking we wouldn't have enough things to discuss today. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again for making this morning wonderful and making uh, my life exciting every day as I get up to prepare a broadcast for you. I love doing it. I really, really do. And as I was telling uh, Eric, with whom I was conversing earlier this morning, uh, uh, and I think I can quote myself, um, I think I said something along the lines, because Eric was saying, you know, thank you for connecting me with something or someone. And I said, you know, my orgasm these days comes from, from being purposeful. And you guys make me purposeful every single day that we get together. And I can't be more grateful for that. So let's not have a long goodbye. Let's just say we'll see you Monday or sometime soon. Have a great weekend. And thank you so much again for the good wishes. And thank you for being in touch. Take care.